traders all over the planet. Today's video is an expanded tutorial in a multi-part series all about options on TradingView. Now, this video is going to be an explainer on top of our previous video about the strategy builder because we want to make sure we show you some of the other features that you can now access and specifically accessing them directly from the chart or if you have a connected brokerage like for example tradestation you can now trade options from your connected brokerage as well now first of all the thing we want to demonstrate because we know a lot of you start your research from the chart just like this and i am currently looking at a chart of google otherwise known as alphabet g-o-o-g-l here we've got this google chart in front of us is that you will notice there is a button down at the bottom right that says options now if you click this options button you have now got some expanded capabilities first of all you'll notice that i can expand the menu to fit my exact needs well why does this matter well this matters for a very big reason and that is let's say i'm looking at a chart of google here i can click chain i can type in google g-o-g-l here under chain select google and now check this out i have got the perfect view for my needs on one hand i've got this chart of google maybe for example i am watching this technical level down here where this area is just going to circle it looks like there must have been some kind of event that caused this gap up might have been the quantum computing sort of announcement that they had uh, you know released and now effectively i've got this data this information right here on my chart with this line going across it and i've got the options chain for google so in this tutorial video let's talk about the options chain we've already made a video about the strategy builder and we walked you through that we'll have more videos about this coming soon as well building these strategies based off of the specific symbol such as google but for this video let's really dive into the options chain and make that at the core focus okay the first thing to know about this options chain video is that you have your chart here and now you can essentially focus in on the different options contracts available to you based off of the research you've done first of all these dates up here are expiration dates expiration dates are effectively the date where the contract expires and if the price in the an example of a of a call option calls here you say is above the strike price on that expiration date you're in the money you you know you're in the money your, your calls could actually expire in the money and you could then claim the shares according to the contract or you could sell your contracts for a profit of course if the price on the chart is below the strike price on this expiration date well now they could just effectively expire worthless and it's a lost trade the opposite true is for puts because for puts you think the price is going down so effectively as you do research on your chart ask yourself do you think price is going up or do you think price is going down then based off of that you can look at calls you you know you think that it's going to go up it's just a, a strong purchase or puts you think it's going down there's a way to benefit from the down move for the rest of this video i want to keep it simple and focus on the basics of calls here with some additional information about puts but just really just to highlight how this all works so as mentioned expiration dates february 14th well i'm recording this video on february 13th that means if i were to buy for example a google contract expiring tomorrow literally one day you can even see in parentheses as one at 187.50 we can see current price is 186 that's our chart right here 186 well it has to get above 187.50 by tomorrow so what's kind of cool about this feature as you get started is check this out let me make sure i uh let's see here let's go to chain so one in this example, it would be 187.50. So what I'm going to do then is horizontal line, double click, coordinates, 
187.50. So what I've just done now is I've put a horizontal line here exactly where that expiration date needs to be in order for this options trade by tomorrow to be in the money. Now remember, this is all for education. It's just for insights. It's how you use the tool. That means within one day, price has to go above that for me to be in the money. And of course, I have to add in even the premium I pay for the right to buy above this price with that options contract. But the point is that now with your chart and with the options tool, this is the type of research and combined research you can do with this option chain on this expiration date with your research right here as well. So here it is, this white line, can't miss it. Now, as you can see, there are other option contracts as well as I scroll down, 187.50, 190, 192.50, 195. And this, after all, is all for the expiration date of February 14th or tomorrow. So in other words, if I buy this 187.50, in order for me to make money on this, theoretically, by tomorrow, I need price to be above this level. If it's not, could just expire worthless. I'm not going to make anything. It's a losing trade. But let's go back to the expir expiration dates because you can click through them very effectively and very quickly just by clicking the specific date. Now, keep in mind, February 14th, February 21st, February 28th. So ensure you know how to read this options chain. This is the month at the top. And then this is the expiration date. Now you'll notice that expiration dates move every seven days. Sometimes though, the further you go out, April 17th, May 16th, they actually only move every month. And if you go really far out to next year in 2026, well, they actually don't move until every several months. So you have to have a good feel for how this option chain works and the dates that it's showing. On the near term, February and March, you have options that you can trade every seven days. Keep in mind, you know, essentially, I want to say most of the time, it's not a guarantee, but really most of the time, options contracts expire on a Friday. So you can see this is March 7th, a Friday, March 14th, a Friday, March 21st, a Friday. So you've got this really nice, repeatable seven day contract expiration easy to visualize and click into. Now pay attention here. If we go to February 14th, look at the strike here, it says, you know, let's just stay on this 187.50. Notice that the bid here is 57 cents. But if I go further out, say to March 7th, there's no 187.50 there. So let's go to stick to February 28th, 187.50. The bid is now $3.20. Well, what could possibly explain the difference in these prices? Well, you're paying for more time. Remember, this contract literally expires tomorrow. It costs 57 cents. But that's kind of a gamble. It's, it's That's not a whole lot of time for it to get in the money to go above 187.50. And we see that on the chart here. It has to clear this entire gap here get above this line just to be in the money and even to exceed the premium that we are paying as well. Now, another key feature to understand about this is that as you click through your expiration dates, this entire options chain window is going to completely update accordingly. Now, you've got a number of things to look at. You've got Rho, you've got Vega, you've got Theta, you've got Gamma, and you've got Delta. You've also got Price, ask and bid. So let's talk about what these mean. Well, your strike and your implied volatility as well. But let's talk about first, very important that we talk about this. Let's first talk about the specific price, ask and bid. Well, if you're a trader, you know what bid is. Bid is what people are bidding at at any given point in time. So for example, this trade here on these options contracts at 187.50, someone's bidding 57 cents but the ask is 60 cents. Now, normally you will see these bid and asks move oftentimes in five cent increments. Options trading sort of just has a different sort of spread. Five cents is very common. And then you can see the middle ground here is 58 cents, which is between the bid and the ask. So the lowest bid is 57 cents. The ask is 80. There's a price discovery happening at 58 cents. So you can get a good feel for this. Now, another way to think about this is that if the bid is 57 cents, you might put in a limit order for 50 cents, but you're not going to get filled right away because someone's bidding 57 cents. So you have to wait, right? If someone's bidding seven cents higher than you. You think it's going to go lower, set your limit lower, but just have your expectations aligned properly. 
for ask 60 cents. So if, if you're trying to get a move higher, maybe you bought at 50 cents. Well, right now you're up technically eight cents because the price is 58, but really also your current ceiling is 60. You're gonna need a lot of bullish buying pressure to blast above this and to create sort of you know a new ask that's higher than this. So that's how you read your bid ask and price. Now we're gonna talk about delta, gamma, theta, vega, and rho rather quickly as we go through this options chain. The Greeks are especially fascinating. And by the way, they're called Greeks, Delta, Gamma, Theta, Vega, Rho. They are embedded in mathematics and Greeks for their, their essentially the foundation of the term is in the Greek language or Greek mathematical concepts. And you can think about Delta, which is the first one here, Delta, you can see here, which is a sensitivity measure of an options price to changes in the underlying assets price, meaning Delta is a really nice way to measure. Well, if Google goes up a dollar, how much does the ad, does the does the options contract go up? It's just a really wonderful way to really see what type of impact the actual movement in the underlying security, which is Google stock, will have on the options contract expiring February fourteenth. Gamma, which you can see here, right here, is the rate of change of delta as the underlying price moves. So gamma is a way to get a feel for delta. It's sort of a derivative, you could say, of delta. So by combining the two of them, you really get a feel for how much the underlying security, Google needs to move, to move this specific underlying options contract and what that movement might look like. Now, theta down here, as you can see, is a measure of time decay, which means it is indicating how much value an option loses each day. This is incredibly important because we've walked you through the options contracts, right? You know how options contracts work now or where their expiration date is. Well, as each day progresses forward, an options contract is going to lose value and you have to know, you truly just have to know like how much value could that options contract lose as each day goes on and especially if it's not in the money. Then there is Rho, which you can see here. Rho is a larger macro type of indicator or mathematical concept for those who follow interest rate changes. Now that's important because interest rate changes after all are the risk free, right? They're the risk free rate of return. And so it's pretty important that you have a good feel for maybe what interest rate changes could do to the options contract. Some of you may not matter so much or care about that because you know interest rates move slow. They're in another world, not a part of your trading strategy. A quick tip here as well, as you really get involved in each contract is you have this wonderful drop down button here. You click this drop down and check this out. You have all the details you need. You've got Google, February 14th, 2025 call, $187.50. You got your bid, your ask, your theoretical, your implied volatility, your intrinsic value, your time value, your days to expiration, DTE, delta, gamma, vega, theta, rho, which we all just went through. And then you also have this really nice PL graph that is showing you what could happen to this options contract, assuming that it effectively you know, goes in the money, what your current PL could look like, what the expiration PL is, and the delta. So really just a beautiful visual here for the data behind this specific options contract. This orange dotted line is Delta. You can see it moving on the graph. The red here is if you're, you know, in, in effectively, you know, uh, expiring worthless or you, you're losing, you know, it doesn't, you don't gain any money. The green line shows after you hit this break even at this gray marker that your trade is in the money as it effectively goes into the money and price rises. And then the dotted blue line is your current PL. So you can really get a feel for the relationship that takes place. Now, also from this option train, you can click launch builder and it will open the builder up for you to then construct a specific options builder to your needs. You can also click see overview. Now, this is a really nice and important feature here because on this see overview page, you're going to be able to see things like, for example, the amount of volume, 
and additional statistics. Now I'm going to show you how this page looks on the symbol page for this contract. Allow me one second to switch my screen view. So now I have opened up this specific options contract page for Google, and I've really got some great visuals. I can see how the contract is traded over different timeframes. I can even open it up as a full size chart, take a picture of it, even change it to candlesticks as needed. Scroll down, here's your expected PL on expiration, buying one contract, selling one contract. You've got your Greeks, as we've already explained, and moving through those. And then, of course, your key terms and some really important stats, such as volume. You're going to want to know how many options contract, well, how many options contracts have traded for this specific symbol. And if you go down, you're going to learn more about the contract that the underlying company, what, what it does and what it represents and even a bio about it. So you could go through all sorts of companies to learn about them as well directly from this specific page. Now, keep in mind, there are some other details here as well. And remember when you're on this specific page for any symbol now, so here's the overview page for Google, you've got this wonderful options button that you can click. And everything that I've explained in this video is once again, open to you right here on the symbol overview page. And you've got all all of the data and details that you need. Now, this video is a full walkthrough of the options chain on TradingView. And ideally, you walked away with a very nice understanding of how this options chain works, how to click through it, how to access it, and how to get started. We've now got several videos in this options tutorial video process. We have a live video with our partner TradeStation, which shows a live walkthrough and placing a trade. We also have an introductory video when we first launched the project as well or product as well which you can watch and now this about options chains in future videos we will add on to our very clear and detailed explainer about placing trades and creating chains trades as well as going through the volatility capabilities so stay tuned for more and thanks so much for watching this video about options on TradingView.